what I'd like to do to get you all started is to have you think about the word technology. So what comes to mind when you hear the word technology? What do you think your average third grader might say to you if you asked for examples? So what are some things? Computers. Computers, yes. Um, anything else? Video games. IPhones. iPhones, video games, great. Calculators. Calculators, great. Excellent. OK. So these are kind of some really good examples of what kids might think of. I'm going to leave this list up here. And we're going to come back to it. Because what I want to do now is to take this moment to do an analysis of a mystery object, which happens to be a technology. Here I have mystery bags. And in our mystery bags, we have an example of a technology. And so I'm going to give one to each table. And what you're going to do at your tables is you're going to take out the technology and examine it by answering these questions. So the first question is, what is it? What does your technology do? Okay, what problem does it solve? If you were stuck on a deserted island, like on Lost or something, right? <laughs> or Gilligan's Island, right? <laughs> sure. what, how else could you use it, right? What are some of the ways that you could take advantage of whatever it is to, to use it for something else? Then I want you to take a closer look. What materials are your technologies made of, okay? And start to think about why that might be important. And then as an offshoot of that, what other materials could it be made of? Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to discuss this at your table, and then we're going to share out some of the different technologies as a way to, to talk about what they are. So let me just quickly give you your bags. <laughs> right. well, I tried to so the technology piece is... Glue it's the glue, it's glue stick. stick. The problem that it solves is uh, things Sticks. that don't stick together, right? It helps stick things together. What does it do? It sticks things together. How else could you use it? Oh, well, it depends on if you're an elementary student. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you had more than one, you could use it to move something. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you could make it. I was thinking lightsaber. <laughs> um, I don't know what it's made out of. We don't know. So we and we don't know what else it could be. It could be made out of rubber. Like I mean, the 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 problem, the the stickiness, right? You could do rubber cement, which is made out of rubber. And you could absolutely use flour and water. I was going to say flour and water. Yeah. Okay. Flour and water. The container you could make like a toothpaste container. Mm -hmm. Maybe squirt it out a little bit. Yep. So let's take a look at what you all found. Um, so let me start here. So we can all bring our attention to this magnificent example of a technology. What is this? Spoon. It's a spoon. We all agree? Yes. <laughs> so what does your technology do? What problem does it solve? It stirs things. It can stir things. OK. It measures things. Measures things. OK. In general, what's the, picks what? Picks things up. Picks things up. In particular, what is a spoon good at picking up? How is it different liquid. from liquid. a liquid, right? So what would happen if you didn't have this spoon? What would you do instead? Cup your hands. Cup your hands, <laughs> right? <laughs> Shove your face into whatever is in the, you know? And so it, it's really quite useful. Um, and then it's also, you know, keeps you a little cleaner, right? Rather than having it all over your face, right? So the spoon's actually a very, very useful technology. I heard you say, though, that you could use it in other ways. So there's stirring, there's measuring, Anything else you could think of if you were stuck? Digging. Digging. Excellent. Great. It's a good digging instrument. Excellent. So there are many different ways that I'm sure we all have co-opted spoons as well. Good. So now I want you to focus in on the materials. So what is this made out of? Plastic. Plastic. Great. What are some of the um, benefits of plastic? It's light. It's light. Great. Flexible. It's flexible. It's cheap. It's cheap. Excellent. So now let's contrast this, because what are some other things that spoons are made out of? Metal. Metal. Great. We have lots of metal spoons. What else? Wood. OK. So let's think about the metal spoon and this plastic spoon. OK. So comparing contrast, we have that um, a plastic spoon that is light and cheap and flexible. How is it the different from a metal spoon? What are the properties of metal? It's not light, right? What else? 
more expensive. It's more expensive, right? It's not as flexible, it's stronger, great. So we're talking about things like durability, right? And in, in the expense of, of the um, material and the flexibility of the material, right? It's a greener technology. It's a greener technology, good. So now we're starting thinking of, of, of costs and benefits. So thinking about the properties of materials, how does that in some way now change the function of your object? Because a metal spoon and a plastic spoon they both do the same essential thing, right? They bring liquids to your mouth, they can stir, right? They can dig, right? So then why is it that you would use a plastic spoon over a metal spoon? Convenience. Convenience, tell me more about that. Metal spoons are too expensive to throw away. Great. You have to carry it around with you all day. Great, excellent, so these are then disposable, right? If you have a picnic where you need to carry 500 spoons, what kind of spoon are you going to pick? A plastic spoon, right? So now you see that the property of the material, the lightness of the plastic, the cheapness of this production, now makes it so the spoon has become a disposable spoon, right? Your metal spoon is very different, right? So a metal spoon might be used in what other, you know, why would you use a metal spoon over a plastic spoon? Anyone? Heat. For heat, right? Because what might happen to the spoon? It might melt. Great, might melt. So then, like thinking about heat, when might you use a wooden spoon over a metal spoon? For cooking. Okay. For cooking, and why? So you don't scratch your pan. Could you scratch your pan? What else? And so it wouldn't melt. It wouldn't melt. It doesn't burn your hands. It doesn't burn your hands, right? So the conductivity of the metal starts to become an important property. So all these spoons do the same things, but then the function gets refined because of the, of the materials, right? You start to use one over the other because of these very subtle things. So the material is important when you think about the design of a technology. And so I want you to keep that in mind today as we go and do this workshop. Um, let me turn here. Here's another great technology, teacher's best friends, right? What is this? A post-it <laughs> note. So let's really focus in on this post-it note. What are the different parts of this post-it note? Glue. Glue. Yeah. Adhesive. Mm -hmm. What else? Paper. Paper. OK. So what problem does just the paper solve? Place to write something down. down. Right. Place to write something down. It's a place to record information. Great. What problem does just the glue solve? You don't lose it. it. You don't lose it. Right. You can stick it somewhere. Um, so then together, what does the glue and the paper solve? You don't lose what you write. You don't <laughs> lose what you write, right? Exactly. And so what we have in contrast, right, is we have this spoon, which is just one technology, right? It's just together, just by itself. And then we have this technology that's really made up of two technologies, right? It's made of two things that solve different problems, right? The glue solves a very different problem from the paper, but you put them together and it solves a new problem. So what do we call things that are made up of two parts? Things that work in conjunction together is an example of a system, okay? So sometimes technologies can be simple objects, like this spoon, right? And sometimes technologies can be systems made up of more than one part. And oftentimes those parts solve different problems by themselves, but you put them together and it solves a new problem. Great. Um, so any questions about systems and such? Is there anything you'd like to add as you, about this technology as, as you were discussing it? We were kind of brainstorming <coughs> um, how we could use the adhesive differently. Ah, great. So, so we tried taking that. it apart. Um, we actually talked about it different ways. We first talked about what would we replace the paper with. And we talked uh -huh. about felt or materials, right. then we need a heavier adhesive. Right. And then we tried to decide what would we use if we could remove the adhesive. What else could we attach it to that mm. we need something to stick, but it wouldn't be permanent. So it couldn't so be a heavy right. object. It's a very special kind of adhesive. Right. Right. It's mm -hmm. not just a glue mm -hmm. that's going to permanently stick mm -hmm. something. The purpose right. of a post-it is to make sure that it doesn't stay there forever. Excellent. And that it doesn't leave a mark Great. necessarily. Great. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you were thinking of the properties of the glue and knowing that there are different kinds of glue, but the properties of the glue are really important towards the problem that you're trying to solve, right? And so if you want something that's removable that doesn't ruin whatever it's sticking to, you need a certain type of adhesive. Great, and that's just like you're thinking, just you're trying to design a technology. Great, excellent. All right, let me back up here. Let's take a look at this one. This one's a slightly more complicated one. What is this? Paper with 
directions. Paper with directions. Great. What are the directions for? How to make jam or jelly. How to make jam or jelly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it sounds like, again, that we have something with two parts. We have the paper and we have the directions. What does the paper do? Allows you to put directions on it. Allows you to put directions on it. How would you pass on a recipe to, say, your daughter or son if you did not have paper? The word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Word of mouth, right? So it, it, it's able to preserve information. Because what often happens when you pass things on word of mouth? Change. They change, right? I mean, that is the whole premise of the telephone game, right? Is eventually you have something completely different from what you started with, okay? And that might be a problem, right? Because what problem, this information here, what problem does this solve? If you have a recipe for preserves and on back you have the directions for canning, what problem does this solve, particularly 100 years ago? Preserve your food, right? It's about in New England, we have one season, which is where you get all your fruit and crops, right? And then you have the rest of the months where there's nothing, right? And so what happens if, say, you know, you 200, uh, 100, 200 years ago, and you had no refrigeration? What would happen if you did not do this right? Health and safety issues. Health and safety issues, right? Because if you, for example, don't heat up your jars hot enough, what happens to your preserves? It gets moldy and bacteria, right. And if you have moldy and bacterial, um, you know, moldy and, and bacteria infested Preserves, what could happen? People get sick. People, People get, get sick. sick. And if you don't have preserves at all, what happens? You die. Starve. Right. Scurvy. You know, you, you don't want that <laughs> in your life, right? So this, this, these directions here also solve a really important problem. And so what I want to emphasize here is that technologies are not always physical things that you can touch that are tangible. Sometimes they're instructions and ideas that lead to the solving of a problem. Okay, and so these type of technologies are processes. Okay, so we have technologies that are objects, just objects like the spoon, even just this card is an object, right? We have technologies that are a combination of things which we call, right? And then we have technologies that are intangible but solve a problem called excellent. Okay, so those are some of the things that I want you to think about. So now that we've gotten a chance to really look at a technology in more depth, let's go back to our original list. Let's now think about what we've learned from this activity. How would you change this list? If I were now to ask you to define technology <laughs> or come up with the definition of technology, what would you say? Solves a problem. Solves a problem. Okay, so technology solves a problem. So all these things up here at the top, are they technologies too? Yes. Yes. Great. So what else do, do these, these things have in common? Is there anything else that you would add? Convenience. Okay. Solves a problem, provides convenience. Its design has a purpose. Its design has a purpose. So I say designed with a purpose. I, I'm curious, do, does all technology provide convenience? That's a good question. That's a good question. So tell me more about how, what you're thinking about when you say that. I, I don't know. I'm just thinking because you're talking about the spoon. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the plastic spoon might mm -hmm. provide more convenience, but maybe not necessarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I just, it just when mm -hmm. convenience, I'm thinking, well, is all technology convenient? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That I'm just curious. Right. If right. I had the choice between using my hand or a spoon, I'm pretty sure I'd choose a spoon because it's right. more convenient than. Right. Okay. Okay. I mean. Okay. But or with that too, it would be like doing things <coughs> faster, mm -hmm. like mm, a so calculator. So maybe we can say that. Would you say that maybe convenience and efficiency are subsets of solving a problem? So to keep to a broader definition, we'll just stick to solving a problem. How about this? I'll put it in parentheses. Does that work? Right? So we see solves a problem and some of the problems it might solve are convenience and more efficiency. Okay? Um, is, anything, is there anything in this room that's not a technology? People. People. Us? We're not. We're not. Okay, so why? Man-made, I think, is, is part of it. Part of it. So that whole design part of it. Okay, so how about technology is anything human-made that solves a problem? Right? So it's designed with a purpose. The design piece is really important. 
I would argue that it doesn't have to be human made because mm -hmm. animals make tools mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. That's a very real issue that scientists, you know, particularly cultural anthropologists talk about, right? What exactly is a tool, right? What exactly can animals make tools? And that's sort of that gray area. Um, and so I would say that if kids bring that up, be like, yeah, go for it, you know, and, and have that discussion. Um, for the purposes of, of this curriculum, we'll just say stick with human made for now. But I think that you're right, the design part of it and the idea that not just humans can design is a really interesting thing to think about. Um, anything else that you would add to this? Are technologies always just things? What kind of things can they be? An object, a system, or a process. Object, system, or a process, right. Can be objects systems or processes. Excellent. So how do we feel about this definition right now? Is there anything that you want to add or take away or change still? Great. All right. So then if we're in agreement, um, let's take a look at the definition that we use in our curriculum. So it's very similar to what you've all come up with. Anything human made that is used to solve a problem or fulfill a desire. Okay. Technology can be an object, a system, or a process. Now, when we say object, a system, or a process, that means that it could be just a process, right? I think that's something that's very, it's very abstract. When we do this with students, um, particularly younger students, this is the first time they've been exposed to it, we don't put the, the recipe in there. Because it is, like you said, it's like it just, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't compute. Sometimes you have to have more experience. Now that we have an agreed upon um, definition of technology, the question now is, is how is technology related to engineering? Okay, what exactly is the connection? So let me just go back to my favorite object right there. Let's take a look at the spoon. Okay. So one of the other functions or uses for the spoon that was mentioned is that it could be a tool for digging, okay? So let's say that I have a 10 foot by 10 foot plot in my backyard that I want to turn into a vegetable garden, okay? And it's the end, you know, it's the beginning of spring, the dirt's really compact, and I've got to like loosen the soil. Is this an effective tool for that kind of work? No. No, yeah. So how would you change this tool? How would you improve upon this technology to make it a better digging tool? Because it, it can dig. Right? What would you do to improve it? Make it larger. Make it larger. Which part? The whole the thing. The whole thing larger. Okay. So now I've got a giant spoon. Okay. But why would you make it larger? Covering a larger area. Cover a larger area. So we're talking about efficiency, right? So this bigger spoon part of it means that you can do what? Dig more. Scoop, Pick up. More. scoop more dirt, right? Per, per scoop. What about this handle? How does that help with, your, with the, what you're doing? You're taller. Yeah, you don't have to bend down. Okay, so I hear two things. I hear you're taller, so you're talking about ergonomics and it's comfort, right? You can actually stand instead of like hunched over. And then I hear leverage, right? That it cr it's a lever, right? So we are talking about simple machines. You can do um, work more efficiently. Again, great. What else would you change? Material, Material. and what? I was going to say, rather than <coughs> it being closed, mm -hmm. spread it out so that it, you can, um, like, it's going to be easier to put something smaller into the dirt than it would be a, a wider point. Okay. So make it more like a fork. Oh, <laughs> you're saying put little, little yeah, things, on it. things on it. Ah, okay. Because if you have tines on it, tell me, so you, it mean, it tell will, me how that works. It will pierce the dirt easier. Pierce the dirt. Great. Smaller. What simple machine is that? A wedge. A wedge. Great. So now we're talking about levers and wedges. Excellent. So the wedge, you put more, the force is concentrated in one point, like you said, and it'll go into the dirt easier. Great. Um, so I heard, now I just want to summarize, you make the, sp the spade l larger to move more dirt. We make the handle larger for more leverage. We also make it a little pointy things because it's a wedge that will allow you to pierce the dirt more effectively. And then I heard something about materials. Someone said, you said something about materials. So tell me more about the materials. What would you change it to? Something stiffer. Something stiffer. What's something that's stiffer? Steel. Metal, steel. Okay, great. So we have metal and steel. Would you make the whole thing steel? 
No. Okay, why not? It would be too heavy. Too heavy. So what would you make not steel? The handle. The handle. Okay, so now we have a steel scooper, right, that is much more, um, much stiffer. What are, what are some of the other properties of steel that make it a better tool? Durability. That will make this better. What's that? Durability. Durability, right? Because you want it to be harder than what you're digging into. Great. So you have things more durable. It won't break. What would you change the handle to then if you're not going to use a metal? Wooded. Rubber or wood. So tell me why rubber or wood? Lighter. lighter. Great. So it's lighter. You, grip it better. you can grip it better. So again, we're talking about ergonomics. Excellent. Okay. It's cheaper. Excellent. And what's also the benefit of rubber or wood if this is laying out on a hot summer day as you go in for your cool glass of iced tea? Oh, it's not it right. It doesn't get as hot, right? So you don't pick it up and then burn your hand off, right? So we have a bunch of different ideas. We've just taken this very simple object of a spoon that does something very different and made it a better digging tool. We've talked about efficiency, right, in terms of making a larger spade. We've talked about leverage and wedges, so simple we've used our knowledge of simple machines. We've used our knowledge of material properties to solve our goal, right? So we changed it into something that was more durable on top, right, and something that's lighter and non-conductive for the handle. So who are the people that do this? Who are the people that use this kind of knowledge to improve or create new technologies? Engineers. Engineers, right? Engineers are the ones who create new technologies or improve upon existing ones. So that is the link between engineering and technology. Mm -hmm.